Jackson Ferrari in tow somewhere. But who said this car isn't a good city car? We're going into Manhattan. Talk about anxiety. Let's drive a race car in this city. Like, I don't have a fuel gauge. I don't know how much fuel is in my car. And I get like a mile per gallon. All right, guys, before we get to today's video, quick shout out to my own company, Adventure Drive. So we do these driving events all over the world. 2023 is no exception. We've got three trips coming up. One from Washington, D.C. to Nashville. This is from April 26th to the 30th. Then in July, we're doing a trip to Italy, which is gonna be phenomenal. It's all Northern Italy, starting and ending in Rome. You're gonna love that one. And if you can't make it overseas or to the East Coast trip, you've got plenty of runway for the September 20th to 25th drive, starting in Napa Valley and ending in Las Vegas. That's gonna be a great trip as well. Check them out. I put a link right below in the description of every video. Hope to see you out there. What's up everybody? Rob Ferretti here at the 2023 New York Auto Show. Now this is a special year for me because it's 20 years ago that I decided that street racing could become profitable and I was able to launch super speeders here at the New York Auto Show in 2003. So that's a pretty wild experience for me. I'm gonna take you around the show, show you what's here this year, give you a couple of tips and tricks on how to get around the show with the least amount of crowds and show you some of the cool stuff you're gonna be able to see, including some of my cars if you come visit the show this week. Obviously, I'm here during press day, so you're going to see the least amount of crowds here. Don't expect it to be this quiet unless you come during the week, early in the morning. You stand a chance at getting this sort of access to the cars. Some of my favorite cars here, and probably my favorite car is right here when you walk in the door, because I am going to buy one of these cars. I've always liked the idea of the Supra when they came out with the FT1 concept. Then I was a little let down by it. Then they came out and made it manual, and the manual Supra is actually right here and i'm going to buy it because it's going to be one of the last like combustion engine manual sports cars that you can buy i'm waiting till they discontinue it though and here's why because when they discontinue this car i will know that they've produced the best variant of it right like i'd hate to buy this car and then find out like hey by the way we're making one with a wing and a targa and like a final edition so i will buy one of these in manual like this one is but I'm gonna wait until they've exhausted all uh, money plays on this car to try to make it um, as appetizing as they can over the years. And yeah, I mean, look, three pedals. It's a nice clutch, almost like it's out of a BMW. Nice notchy gearbox. So my problem with the Supra that I had, I didn't like the wind buffeting. I to have a feeling it's gonna have the same problem though in this car but you know what I will drive the crap out of one of these things if it's manual if it comes with a wing if they put a body kit on it if they spruce it up and give it a little bit of a, a ZR1 sort of package I'm all about it um, so you will see one of these in my garage as I start buying the last of the cool cars that are able to be bought in, unless they start changing regulations to allow for further combustion cars and not just hybrid and electric I think this is the biggest theme change you're gonna see over the last 20 years at the auto show is right here. You're actually seeing the electrification of the industry and all vehicles are switching over to electric and that's sort of, look, it's good, I guess, for the environment. It's questionable. Everybody's gonna argue that until they're blue in the face, but it's happening whether you like it or not. So you gotta get on board with that. Uh, I like the idea of pedestrian and everyday cars being electric, fun cars to me can never be electric. They have to be, and like, look, a go-kart, sure, I can have fun in the go-kart, but when I'm driving around a car, I don't mind if the performance is lower. I like to feel and enjoy the car. I just, I, I don't know how to put this in a clean manner that, that can run on this video, but for me, I like the noise, I like the sound, I like feeling the vibrations of the car, the sound of the car, hearing when I should be shifting, actually shifting the car, all of that stuff is enjoyable to me, which is why I'm buying the cars that I'm buying and I'm holding on to them forever. 
And this is the time where you realize, like, you know what? I'm the old guy, right? I'm the old guy with the 70 Chevelle being like, I don't need any of this fancy new crap. And I'm the guy who's going to sort of keep my cars. I'll be happy in my own little world. And everybody around me can spin their Model S plaids and whatever they want at a quicker pace. But I'm going to enjoy myself just the same. Here you have the Porsche offerings here at the show. I would assume that these are provided by Manhattan Motor Cars, showing you some of the cars that you can't buy because it, they're very difficult to get right now. Still, Porsche is a very in-demand brand and trying to lock yourself into a, a turbo or a GT car, not as easy, or a Targa, anything like that, not as easy as you might want to think. And I miss the days where money could buy a car and you can go and regardless of what it was, you probably were able to negotiate a little bit. Those days are over. Now it's just like they're doing you a favor by selling you a car and that's not the way it's supposed to be. So this is something that's changed over the years. Now you can do a ride and drive at the auto show inside and this wasn't possible with gas cars obviously because of the fumes, but now you can do this inside. Now, granted, if you haven't been in an electric car by now, I mean, it was newer years ago. Now I feel like everybody's at least been in an electric car, so they get the benefits of it. But if you want something to do, if you're bringing your kids to the show, this is definitely something fun to hop in and go for a spin because they do accelerate very fast. And in the short tracks that they do put in inside, it is a pretty cool experience to hear the tires squealing and feeling a little bit of the G-loads in these electric cars at the auto show. Speaking of faster, here we've got the Dodge Demon 170, which is a fully decked out like guy buys Demon and then tries to track prep it. These are not tires that I want to take on a road trip. These are Mickey Thompson, um, I think the ET Streets, right? Yeah, the ET Streets. It's got a shoot on it. Uh, I can't imagine that's factory. <laughs> but this is just an exercise in just how nuts you can do the car. The fact that they're giving it to you with a warranty, uh, cage, everything like that. And you need that because this car is running from the factory over a thousand horsepower and running an 890 in the quarter mile. So if you're interested in buying something out of the box and saving a significant amount of money, because if you think about it, if you try to build up a car, you're going to break it a lot trying to get to an eight second quarter mile car to have factory engineering behind it, it's not really a bad deal at $100,000, but you have to be really into drag racing to care about that because this is not going to do very much on a road course or anywhere else. This is designed for straight line, sort of like lift the wheels driving, not necessarily anything else. So, But there are a lot of people out there that lived that life, just not me. We have some concept cars and also the concept of the car you want versus the car you can afford. Here you have the Lamborghini Storato, which is the off-road Lamborghini. I don't know if I've got the stomach for this one. I just wouldn't want to damage it all the time, which I feel like I would if I owned it and actually took it off-roading like it was designed. But it is an exercise in just how capable the all-wheel drive platform can be if you've got the stones to go beat up your car off-roading, which I don't think a lot of people do. This is going to be a novelty purchase for a lot. And you'll see a lot of them driving through parking lots and nonsense like that, and not really uh, what the car is capable of, because in general, just driving this the way it's capable, you're going to end up banging the shit out of it. And do you really want to do that versus buying a Jeep? No. Uh, you're better off buying a, a car that's significantly cheaper to repair, even though it's got extra padding on it, I'd still do Lamborghinis for road, off-road vehicles for off-road. Obviously the Rimac looks stellar and we all know how capable it is. Very fast offering here. Take care, my dear. Here you have the Koenigsegg four-seater Gamera, which cool if you have a F ton of money or you can go over here and this is slightly um, more purpose-built is the Regera, and this is a phenomenal-looking car. Not my style, honestly. If I'm dropping the money on a Koenigsegg, it's going to be something that's all motor. I mean, obviously, all motor, supercharger, turbo. It doesn't matter, but it's going to be a combustion engine. All right, now let's check out some of the R35 GTRs, which 
albeit not my favorite platform. I understand they're very capable, but if given the choice between the R34 or the R35, it's, I, I guarantee everybody is going to choose the R34 unless they don't know the difference between the two, in which case they may elect to take an R35, which looks like this one has the Nismo package on it, which is the coolest version of this car. But, I mean, at a certain point in time, and it does look pretty cool, right? But like, I'm gonna stick with the R34 as the best variant. It's like the uh, fourth generation Supra versus the fifth one. If you called this something else, I probably would have a different respect for it, but that thing uh, laid quite the legacy. Now you get the Proto Z right over here, which is uh, entry level stuff, but one of the last fun ICE cars that you're gonna be able to purchase right here in manual. You can't come to the auto show without seeing a prominent Chevrolet display. Uh, you have a bunch of stuff that I don't care about over here. But here you have the uh, Corvette E-Ray. Now, the E-Ray is a capable car. It's a hybrid vehicle. And my main concern with this car, other than its three mile all electric range, is that, again, it looks just like every other C8, which is also my same issue that I have with my C8 Z06, is that they all look too similar. So, and then there's too many of them out there. It presents quite the issue. Uh, when you're trying to buy something or sell something at different price points throughout the range. Now, this Z06 over here is probably a $150,000 window sticker, and the only thing that really makes it stand out is the Z07 package, which my first Z06 does not have with the extra carbon uh, winglets in the front and the wing in the back. Otherwise, it's a pretty standard C8 from there. Obviously, the carbon wheels are pretty trick, too. But let's see, I'm, I'm guessing 150 or 170. See, that's a heavy car. Um, and then sadly, oh, this is a 3LZ. $50,000 in options on a Corvette. Generally not something you see. But we'll see. I'm, uh, this is pretty much the spec I'm getting. I'm not going to get the 3LZ spec, but I'm going to get the carbon wheels, carbon wing, carbon uh, accent. So at least it does look cool and uh, another car from my Keeper collection. But I'm not gonna spend too much time on this because I have it in my garage. And of course, Ford is gonna get a little love here because on a platform, which you generally don't see a Mustang on a platform, you have the new generation Mustang. So something to behold for an attainable sports car for a lot of people. What oh. But definitely worth checking out if you're shopping for a sports car and you are on a fixed budget. This is bringing performance to the masses as it's been doing for 50 years. And it does look pretty good. I'm not going to lie. They definitely went back to the 60s shape. Uh, the evolution of 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s where it started to get very boxy and then it started to smooth back out. And do the classic shape of the 60s staying again. So worth checking out if you're here. And let's, can't show up here without seeing the highlight of the show, which we're gonna go check out now, which is my cars and they're downstairs. Now the downstairs has primarily been a truck space at the New York Auto Show over the decades. However, now it is a hybrid electric space for half of it. And the other is a custom car display, which is really gonna be a, a neat trick for a lot of people that don't get out to car shows. Uh, you see stuff as old as the Countach over there, um, some very cool BMWs, some very cool uh, modified cars. You've got a excellent JDM collection right here. And this is, I think, Smokey Nagata's car, which is very cool. Yeah, R34, I mean, this thing, this thing gets me excited. Let's not talk about that. Um, just a bunch of pretty epic uh, Sylvia's, BMWs over here. And then, boom, you got my cars, uh, which are not stanchioned off. They should be stanchioned off come the show. But I've got my uh, Ferrari here, or one of the Ferraris. I've got my uh, Corvette here. 
and then my NSX all filling the space. So if you want to check it out, we'll probably have something having to do with Adventure Drive's paraphernalia here if you want to check that out. Uh, further down here, the R2X PO, so the R2 Expo, is responsible for all these JDM cars coming in, including a pretty epic lineup of Supras over here. So if you want to check out some Supras, RX-7s, Hondas, Acuras, Lexus, I mean, they're all here. They're all well represented. You're going to get some pretty stellar photos. You'll recognize this car, Mo from Petrol Works. Uh, front and center here, quite a fast car, but definitely going to be worth walking around and uh, photographing while you're here. So check it out. Uh, New York Auto Show, obviously there's the MC20 over here. Let me, I'm, I'm, there's more to show, but I'll just show you some of the stuff. The MC20 with the body kit over here is a very, very fine looking car. And if you want to see more, you got to show up here at the Javits Center. Take a peek, follow their Instagram, and you'll see some cool stuff along the way. And this is a show that has proved that I could make millions of dollars off of street racing, which has to make me one of the more successful street racers on the planet. But I enjoyed it and I had to figure out how to make money doing it, and I did. And that brings me here 20 years later to the New York International Auto Show, where I have a handful of my personal cars over here on display for you guys to check out. And that's not my little mini truck, but I may steal it by the end of the week. Thank you for watching. Uh, this is also a six and a half million dollar Maserati right on the other side of my cars. So whatever you want to check out, they've got you covered here at the New York Auto Show at the Jacob Javits Convention Center in Manhattan, New York. Rob Ferretti, thanks for watching. See you next time.